hello everyone welcome to my channel in this video i am going to discuss the topic electrostatic potential due to charged concentric spherical shells okay now before we go into the detail of this topic we need to get a follow up of the concept that for a spherical shell okay this is a shell that is a hollow sphere uh, of radius capital r if it is charged the charge is will be on the surface charge will be on the surface suppose capital q is the charge so at any point outside the shell at a distance r which is greater than capital r where capital r is the radius at any point outside the shell the potential is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by small r this is outside okay now on the surface on the surface the potential is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by capital r where capital r is the radius now what happens inside inside see inside the spherical shell there is no charge so there is no field electric field is zero inside that is at a distance r less than capital r okay electric field is zero now electric field it is negative gradient of gradient of electric potential so this implies if e is equal to zero that means dv by minus dv by dr is equal to zero that implies v is constant okay and that constant value is equal to the potential on the surface so this v is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by capital r okay so for a spherical shell v in is equal to v surface okay delta v in potential difference between any two points inside the surface is equal to potential difference between any two points on the surf surface this is inside this is on the surface since potential is constant potential difference will be zero surface is equipotential and so is inside the at any point inside the sphere now based on this concept see if at any point inside the potential is when you calculate the potential this potential expression is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by this distance term at any point inside the distance term is equal to the radius at any point outside the distance term is equal to the distance from the center to the point of observation of potential so based on this we will obtain the expression for potential electrostatic potential due to concentric spherical shells okay so for that suppose you have two concentric spherical shells okay so this is of radius r1 and this is of radius r2 suppose this shell inner shell has charge q1 and the outer shell has uniform charge q2 okay outer shell is of radius r2 inner shell is of radius r1 okay now if you calculate the potential on the surface of the outer shell so that is v2 okay so it will be equal to potential on this surface is equal to potential due to discharge charge q2 on this surface so that will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q2 by this radius is r2 so for q2 charge potential on the surface this outer sp spherical shell 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q2 by r2 now due to charge q1 this q1 is inside the spherical shell of radius r2 so it will be plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r2 see i have we have already seen if a point of observation is inside okay the distance you have to take the distance term is from center to the surface okay now if you are calculating the potential on the surface of the inner shell so this charge q1 so it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r1 okay now for the outer surface it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this charge is on the outer surface so distance you have to calculate from the center to the surface so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q2 by r2 okay so this is the expression for the potential on the surface of the outer shell and the inner shell 
if we calculate the potential difference across the two surfaces we get delta v is equal to v1 minus v2 okay so this term and this term cancels out so it is q1 q1 if i take common 4 pi 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 okay now this result is quite interesting now according to this result the potential difference is dependent on charge on the inner shell q1 is the charge on the inner shell okay so potential difference depends on charge on the inner shell okay now let's see what additional information we can derive from this see suppose a wire conducting wire is connected across the two shells okay now what will happen now if a conducting wire is connected across the two shells they will try to acquire the same potential now in their tendency to acquire the same potential there will be a flow of charges okay now suppose this q1 is positive q1 is positive okay now if q1 is positive now this implies v1 is greater than v2 if q1 is positive then this implies v1 is greater than v2 that means inner shell is, shell is at higher potential outer shell is at low potential so and this is a positive charge q1 is a positive charge so a positive charge always flows from high potential to low potential that means the entire charge from the inner shell will flow to the outer shell okay if the entire charge for the inner shell will flow to the outer shell condition is q1 is positive okay and a conducting wire is connected across the two shells okay now let's see what happens when q1 is negative now when q1 is negative even q1 is negative that implies v1 is less than v2 okay so now inner shell is having low potential outer shell is having high potential now again a negative charge always flows from low potential to high potential so again this charge will flow from the inner shell to the outer shell so the second observation we have made is that if first observation is the potential difference is dependent on charge on the inner shell only okay and the second observation is if a conducting wire is connected across the two shells charge will always flow from inner shell to the outer shell irrespective of the nature of the charge if q1 is positive charge will flow from inner shell to outer shell if q1 is negative again the charge will flow from the inner shell to the outer shell so these are the few important concepts for electrostatic potential for concentric sh shells so hope this will be beneficial for the students good luck